Anybody else thinking what I'm thinking? Pizza? I was thinking ice cream. Yo, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. I'm excited because as you can see, we've got our telehandler on site. We've got our trust jib. We picked that up this morning. Way back there, we've got our mega deck. We've got our little scissor lift. All the equipment is here because today is my favorite day, trust day. And we're ready to sand these things up, get going. It's a little bit breezy. Greg's getting chains around everywhere, making sure that we're prepped and ready to go as I was getting these trusses marked. And I think it's time now to start hanging them. These are 60 foot wide trusses. They're big, but not too big. So it's always a little nerving when it's a little windy, but regardless, we've done this before and we're gonna go ahead and do it again. So let's get into it and let's hang some trusses. Ah, there we go. Perfect. Oh, safety first. All right, with these trusses, we gotta have a tagline. I think you should always, but um, specifically these boys, because they're pretty darn big and it's windy out and uh, we don't want them getting out of control. So, hey, uh, Greg's idea, we don't always remember this, but we've got a snap line on the top quarter of these trusses and that is for our soffit, well, our soffit F and J. Um, it's more like a trim that our soffit goes into and our side steel goes into. Sometimes we forget that, but Greg probably just saved us at least 10 minutes instead of doing it on the wall, right? It's a good idea, Greg. You're pretty smart, man. Sometimes. What's up with this? Hey, you wanna show them you're not? Let's see. I kind of do one of these deals and then I kind of pull through like this. And I think then I've got a nice tagline, but then when I'm done, all right. I remember that. Dude, that's like riding a bike because I really, <laughs> I really just winged it there. Let's see. You're an Eagle Scout. That shouldn't be too hard for you. That's true. There. All right, buddy. There's your tagline. Let's run these trusses, huh? We're gonna go all the, way, all the way around the outside of the building on this one. I guess we'll see how these stand, huh? Go ahead and get it up there and then you go. I probably should stay out of the way of this uh, anchor, huh? Where is it, Greg? You know what's really nice? I got my Stabila, so I can make sure that I'm perfectly level. Otherwise, when you get a load way out there like this, it can feel a little bit, a little bit iffy. Oh, yeah, buddy. I hit that one over there, Greg. So the end truss, man, not ideal because I would much rather have our scissor lift outside so we can pound in a comfortable manner. But unfortunately, the ground is not fit yet. We got an, our excavator site guy is gonna be here hopefully this week to do this so we can get outside for roofing. But for trussing, we're gonna have to do everything from the inside, which just means it's a little bit more awkward for us. But still doable. And we really gotta swing this home because we wanna make sure that we've got a good connection back here. We don't want gaps. So it may look like I'm just swinging and hitting the wood, but I'm actually really driving home these ring shank nails. So, um, I mean, these are 30 pennies. They're some big boys, even bigger than the standard uh, 20s that we will typically use. Uh, I need to go down a little bit lower, Greg. Hold it, hold it, dog. Oh, I think that just went some paint. This is an awkward one. Oh, I smelled your armpit. You I put spice. Yeah. Is there anything else? Champion. Uh. Or pure sport. Pure sport, probably. Yeah, I took a chunk off the hammer on that one. 
twice. There, dude, we got, we got that. Trust us, man, they're never perfect. I think we talked about this, but a lot of people always ask about the truss on the end and how it's fastened. And besides sitting on those blocks that we put on during the post build segment, it's getting, how many nails would you say, Greg? I mean, 50? No, on the whole truss on the end. Oh yeah, probably. It's three, setting eight, on the blocks. Nine. Um, so it's laminated to the column, but also resting on the blocks that are on the column on the corners. So yeah, this this is a pretty pretty darn strong connection. I don't have an equation on it though. I'm not an engineer. Being in a lift is safe, but the way we're Sometimes you build, you lock your legs in, you're pretty good. And honestly, I feel more safe in a position where I can comfortably hammer a nail than, you know, if I am in a lift leaning out over a wall and my hammer's in an awkward position, at least this, I've got full three points of contact. My legs are wrapped around this frame that can't go anywhere. and I can comfortably swing a hammer. I look at the wall like a big ladder. So if I can climb a ladder, why can't I just climb my wall? What's the difference? That's my thoughts. At the end of the day, we gotta do things sometimes that are not always black and white on a piece of paper. Sometimes they involve us thinking outside the box, but you always gotta think and be smart about what you're doing. And that's why I try to work out of this mega deck as much as we can, because it is nice. Hold the chain tight with the bot. Yeah, there you go. But as we start putting together this first truss on this first wall, before we detach the telehandler and take that off, because that's like holding everything right now where it's supposed to be, we're gonna get all of our chains in place. We're gonna make sure we've got X's on our wall, and then we're gonna make sure that we're pulling that truss to those dead men that we did during our foundation video when we were putting in all the piers. So. That's what we're doing. It's very important. If you don't start somewhat straight, locked in, uh, and, and kind of just solid, it's just like anything, man. If you don't do the prep work at the beginning, it makes the rest of the job harder. So uh, this does take time, and it is probably the longest part of the trussing, but it's important. So that's what I'm doing here is putting some X braces on my wall, and Greg is getting our chains up from the top cord down to our dead man. So we just always take our chain, put it through the bucket jug lid, that way we don't lose the bucket, because as you can hear, the wind is always blowing out here. Don't drop that chain on my head, Greg. I don't have my hard hat on. Now right now we're just feeling for kind of snug. We're not looking to be perfect yet because we don't have our level out. So I'm just going until it's kind of snug. There. And let's go one more. Okay, so now that's locking in this end wall, not allowing it to shift side to side. Okay. So this is our peak chain, and I've got a chain just like this going back to the dead man that way. And so now it makes sense what we were putting those holes in the ground pouring with concrete and putting those chunks of rebar in with the loop. So now we can hook to them. We call these dead men because it's just basically a big dead piece of concrete in the ground. I actually, I have no, I have no clue why we, we call them dead men. That's just the name for them. I think it's just an industry term. So anyway, I know that this wall is leaning because we've got a wind. So I'm gonna wanna put some stink on this binder. That's maybe not even enough. Oh, but it gets hard. Greg, can you push this wall towards me any? Yeah. Over time, kind of the weight of the chains, the tension on the chains will kind of stretch and stuff. It's not like we're gonna roof this as is. We're gonna pull a lot of, you know, measurements and we're gonna make sure that things are plumb with our plate level. 
but this is just to get it locked in so we feel safe when we're up on this roof. Michael just said, uh, the guy behind the camera, that maybe they're called dead men because it's just dead weight. And I guess, have you ever tried to move a dead person? It's like, it's impossible. And I'm assuming that that is why these are dead men because this is kind of really hard to move because it's stuck in the ground. I've never, a disclaimer, I've never moved a dead man. I can only assume I've tried to move like my dog when he's sleeping on me at night and he acts like he's dead. And he's only 35, 40 pounds. And it's like, good Lord, dog. So I, I assume a dead man would be pretty bad. Greg, a dead man. It's just dead weight. You ever moved a dead man? Yeah, that's what I said. Yeah. Oh, that's not good. Well, we'd have to check like uh, continuity on it or something and ohms resistance between the two yeah, positives like and like negatives. And then we'll can oh. check the voltage meter with a... Uh, <laughs> No, but I, you know what I'm saying. We we can check the resistance between these two contacts and mm -hmm. see if it's if it is good. There could be a break in there or not. Because we've replaced this before. No, I've never replaced that. I'm pretty sure what's his name no. replaced it. Mm -mm. He said that it was uh, yeah. it was jacked up. No, no. Dave was trying to give us Dave, some it. insight into why this machine sucked always, and it's because this motor sucked. Hey, anybody want to buy this uh, machine? It's uh, one owner, like new, a couple hours. No low ballers. We yeah, know we, we know got. what we got. <laughs> <laughs> the best thing would have been to lift them all from that side. Because I don't think we can stand these up, right? I mean, you can't stand this up. Probably. And put my hook underneath of it. Yeah? It's kind of dangerous, but... Yeah. Ah. I don't like that. I think we should strap it. I think that if we weren't grabbing it from the dead center, if we were grabbing it with forks, it probably would be okay. We've done it in the past. Just a center hook, it's not ideal, but it's a lot faster. Now what we gotta do is we're gonna bring straps and we're gonna spread the straps out to these, uh, these webs here. And we know that'll work. It just means we have to hook them up every truss and we have to unhook them after the installation. More time but it'll be safer and better in the long run. So it is what it is. All right, so we're using these, uh, these are overhead slings and these are for a vertical 3,200 pound limit. Um, and that's the way we're gonna be using them. So I'm gonna take this eyelet hook here. That's gonna go around our hook. And then over here, what I'm going to do is I'm actually gonna choker this. So I don't know if that changes exactly. I always Personally, whatever the smallest number that that's rated for, that's kind of what I feel comfortable with, even though if we basket it or sling it, it's, it's valued at a higher weight rating. All we're going to do, which way do you go on this, Greg? You went under? Okay, mm -hmm. I just want to be the same. Is luckily I don't have any gusset plates in my way, so I'm not going to be on any sharp edges. And we're just going to, um, I guess this would be a choker. And I hope that this isn't an issue for us. And I'll tell you why, because normally we use a cable here and we basket the cable here and then we bring it up to two uh, eyes that we then hook with a clevis. We don't have them on us. So we're gonna try this. It's probably going to cinch this pretty tight, I'm assuming. We've got like a 700 pound truss. So like I said, at the worst condition, these straps are rated for 3,200. So weight's not an issue. It just might kind of suck pulling these off if it chokes them too tight. We're gonna find out because this is our only option right now. Right? As of right now, yeah. Yeah, we'll bring the... Without going and having to go grab. Yeah, we're not gonna do that. Our goal is to get this first bay up, get it locked down. Let's go, let's sling some trusses. I feel good about it. All right, Greg, moment of truth. See how she hangs. A lot better. So when I'm bringing this thing in, I'm trying to make sure that my cage is level 
the thing is, as I raise my arm up, there's a sensor back there. Uh, I don't know, there's somewhere back there. And I get a little light right here. I get an orange light. And when that light turns on, it locks my axle. Otherwise, when that light's off, my axle will somewhat self-level, giving me a lot more comfortable ride and keeping my load balanced. Now, these trusses are only 700 pounds. I could stick this thing out as far as I possibly could. And I would be in the 1800 pound range without the jib. So I'm never really putting this in a, in a predicament where I feel unsafe as long as I stay nice and level. Now, when I get close, what I'm gonna have to do is I have to lift my boom up and this light's gonna turn on and it's gonna lock my axle. So I always try to make sure that I'm nice and level first, then I can go ahead and get up there. See my light just turned on and that's when it starts locking in and it's a little bit uncomfortable if you hit a bump because it doesn't soften that bump with the oscillating axle. I'm gonna have to go up there and get it in first, huh? Yeah. I probably should have had you just go up in that one. Oh boy, I'm gonna need you know, if a guy would have brought his hammer. Oh, look at that, I did bring my hammer. So, now that we have that first truss after the end truss in, we can't just put it up there, nail the ends to the columns and leave it. We need some temporary bracing until we put our purlins on. So what I'm going to do is I'm just gonna give myself my marks where the truss should be. And we're gonna set some nails, you'll see, and it's just really like a, a temporary brace, um, like I said, until we're able to put our purlins up. I just got to think about this because the first one is actually here. So let's say first, this is just so I know. And then we're going to put intermediate on these marks. So what I'm going to do confused yet? Me too. I'm going to take some 20 penny nails. Actually, these are thirties. And these will set right over top of my truss and they'll lock it in from moving. And then when I get to the next bay, which when we get out of this first bay where our end truss is a little bit different dimension, I'll just move these nails to these other two lines. I should be good. You know, I know I always say it's, it's not the building moving guys, it's the lift, but now this, this got some pretty good movement right now because we're not really locked in, but as soon as we get these temps on, this is going to get a lot better. And when I say temp, like this is very temporary. We're going we're gonna to try and get these off and the whole truss locked down pretty quickly. I just reach out here. I'm going to lock that side in. And then I'm going to lock that side in. And if the wind is really bad, is yours moving, Greg, or no? I'm gonna throw, yeah, I think if you keep one, you're good. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna do this to tack it just so it doesn't move. It's okay if that slides a little. The goal is now, see how much more rigid this is? Now this is locked into that first truss and we're gonna do one on each, each of these. I wish it wasn't so windy. I wish it wasn't so windy. It just makes things more challenging. Okay, so there we go. That does a lot. All right, let's go drop this telehandler. We'll get to the next truss.
Yes. Yes, queen. <laughs> Hold that rope. You know, and then what? The wind just dies down a little bit? Yeah. <laughs> it's not easy with these long ones with only two guys, but Greg, you had a nice shot there, dude. That sucker, you got, I got, pretty lucky. You got lucky, man. <laughs> All right, well, these, these are 60 penny ring shanks. They're big old nails, and this is what's gonna hold all of our purlins to the top cord of our truss. And they call them oil quenched for a reason, because, well, they're quenched in oil. I don't know, it's really a mess though. <laughs> Man, every time I go up on a tall wall, on a tall truss, in this little lift, I get mad because I let Greg go in the mega deck every time, which is so much more comfortable. Look at that guy. He's down there just living it up in that monster deck all by himself. All right, let's get this first one locked in, huh? So whenever we do the, uh, the first bay of purlins, remember this line we, we, uh, we squared down? That is indicating the outside of our truss. Greg, you wanna go on your mark there? Thank you. And then this mark is where I want my, my purlin to be. So I'm lining up the outside, lining up to the truss line. And that's where we're securing this. And what that's doing is ensuring that from this point, out, we're our 22 and a half, which is gonna give us our two foot overhang. And it gives us something to straighten to because we've got a nice straight line that uh, should be straight from here to the next purlin to the next purlin. So, yeah, you need some help, buddy. <laughs> you know, even though it's not in the scissor lift, like when I'm wrapped around this truss here, this truss is chained, I've got like, a lot of security and my angle is just it's made to hammer nails so it's just so much better and yeah, look at that I got a nice little seat right here nice so these are wind ties and this is gonna tie the bottom cord from post to post end to end and you know just like our purlins up top are giving us some structure these are going to give us some structure but not all the structure we need we have to do some actual permanent bracing as well that'll come later but when you're doing the first bay especially locking in this bottom cord together as one that we can chain it makes us feel a lot better as well so this is a this is another one of those steps that Normally, maybe you don't want to do it right now because you want to just start trussing and keep going, but it does pay off in the end by having a nice, solid building. Trying to make you stronger, buddy. Just trying to make you stronger. Okay, now we've got that last truss. We got our wind ties on. We're gonna come through and Greg's got the plate level. We're gonna check, make sure it's really close and we're gonna tighten all these chains up, snug them up like this X right here. Let's check this end wall, Greg, see what we got. We don't want these under tension and holding the building in a non-square or non-plumb way because then we had to fight it at the end of the, you know, end of the frame up when we're starting to do our steel. We want it to be holding plumb. The point is if we don't do it now, the wood sits here over the next couple weeks while we're finishing the frame. Well, not weeks, I guess, probably even the next week. It sits here and you don't want it to be torqued in a position that you don't want it to be in. So we're gonna make sure everything's plumb, the chains are nice and snug and holding our building where we wanna be. But uh, that's kind of day one of trusses. It's always a lot of work to set the first bay up, get it locked down and where you wanna be. But tomorrow we're good to go and you guys, let's roll this right into tomorrow where we're gonna wrap up the rest of these trusses. 
All right, just like we hope, guys, gorgeous morning. It's early, the sun's shining, there's not a breeze out here, and we got three bays of trusses, so let's just, let's just get into it. I don't wanna waste any time. There, go, go, go. Easy. Yeah, that, was, that worked out pretty good. It's a lot easier when there's no wind. All right, back into the lift. There we go. Greg, I'm gonna get this one. Give me a twist, though. Yeah. So as you can see what happened, we just instantly dug right into this soft gravel. You getting the skid loader, Greg? Or what are you doing? Oh, you're gonna try to just, okay. I don't think that's gonna work, but. You want me to go backwards? Here, give me the board, give me the board, give me the board. I guess we'll try to just push it up over this hump. We'll get onto some good solid gravel. Usually then we can kind of reset, but yeah. I'm not sure why that dug so, so hard right in there. Could be this really loose gravel and no rain for the last like three weeks. Put your forks down underneath my thing. Yeah, there you go. All right, I think so. Then you don't even have to pick me up, you're just gonna push me. Yeah. All right, ready? Go ahead. Okay. It just blows my mind that four inches of gravel is gonna take this thing out of commission and make it stuck. I feel like if you're buying a four wheel drive, off road scissor lift, four wheel drive. Why would, it, why would it not do better than that, Greg? Pretty long throw. Yeah. Ooh, okay, all right, whatever. Do whatever you gotta do. I'll just try to catch it. Oh, we'll try a couple. We'll see. Yeah. Don't make it, don't make it, you know? Yeah. One. <sighs> that was a punch. Yep, two. <laughs> that one kind of hurt. Oh, I see it. Yeah, that was your bad. One more. Come on, come on. Three. If I was, yeah, I mean, if we were in the, what the? That was a right-handed catch. <laughs> Let's go. I mean, four out of six, that's 66%. You're in the Hall of Fame if you're a major leaguer. You're betting 66%. Help you any? Can I drive a 60? You mind? You mind if I do that? Okay. Come on, twist it. There we go. There 
There we go. Knew that was gonna happen. All right, this is the bad one though. All right, you're gonna probably look at this board and think, what in the world? Well, this is a 20 foot two by four in today's world, which is, is actually pretty good. Um, but we need to get it twisted. So what we're gonna do is, these 60 pennies are pretty dang strong. Um, I don't worry too much about this when it's all said and done, but we're gonna take our next purlin in a row here. Greg, you wanna hold me right there? And this is a lap joint purlin anyway. So we're just gonna go ahead, get it connected where we want it. Greg, can you lift up a little? Right there, yep. And then Greg is going to twist this for me. He's gonna use the power of leverage and friendship to get it right where we want it on our line. And then I'm gonna drive two 60s in here. Unfortunately, there's not a pre-drilled hole here, so we're just gonna to have to There, it came out the side. That's okay. We got a straight board though. Yeah, great. Yeah, that was just a extra helper anyway. Not required. Sometimes that happens. Hey, buddy, buddy, what are you doing? You almost killed me. <laughs> well, I killed your future. That's about it. You would have been just fine. Oh, my. oh it's looking pretty good, actually. It's, it's a shame that you have to struggle so hard, Greg. I feel like mine just fall into place. You know? I feel bad about that. Come on. Greg, make sure you're flexing. Yeah. You're nice little thumbnail. Make good job, buddy. I don't want you looking like no chump on my channel, okay? I don't work with no chumps. And you could do something about that farmer's tan though. It's working, I'm sorry. I was cleared up on that. I ain't, I ain't going in no tank top. <laughs> I know what I look like. Patience, grasshopper. Okay, let's flip it over. This is our last truss, finally. Uh, I say finally, but it was only, what, nine? nine yeah. yeah, pretty small truss pile, but. How you guys like my GoPro mount? They fell down again. Did it? All right, that's a long day, guys. Actually, kind of a long couple days. I always feel like trusses are the most physically demanding parts of the job for us. I mean, roofing is hard too if you have long sheets of steel, but honestly, this is the hardest part, but my most enjoyable part, it stinks how fast it goes by because, I mean, that's it. We basically have most of the mainframe done now with the trusses. We've got a little bit on this end wall to frame, the garage door to frame. That's gonna be in another video though, because trusses are done, they're secured, they're chained down and we're ready for overhangs and steel roofs. So stay tuned, make sure you guys follow along if that interests you. Um, hopefully you're enjoying this little series so far, trying to do it a little bit different, not so much educational, but more just, hey, just day in the life of, man, this is what we do. So if you enjoy it, hit that subscribe button, hit the thumbs up, and we'll catch you guys in the next video.